Yeah. Hey, five on the right, two on the left, man. You know what time it is. Yo. We just moors in America, soar through the shores and endure criminal acts of war on our character. Seven years after the fourth score, no reward. Shout out to the most courageous, they was jumping over barriers. Where does that compare to you? We come from a place where you scared to visit our area. We come from a place where it's scary for good Samaritans. Heavy luggage we carry in. Babies having babies, it's crazy being American. Praise the one and only Allah, there's no comparison. La ilaha. Ila Allah, body and buried gin Laughing at you clowns like ha-ha Dodging a Nephilim Conquer lower self with a high Follow your regimen Way before they came we were gods And now we specimen Tried to take the light from our eyes Thank God for Edison Then they put the wool on our eyes It's so embarrassing Now we travel frequently We should invest in Sheraton All of us got gold on our bodies Whenever we stepping in Screaming Ramadan, move a rock Training the flesh again Wishing we could move as a unit just like the Mexicans, dodging all the foods with estrogen, synthetic medicines, all sin is in devilish. Sometimes the decisions that you make come for a better gift. Sometimes when you sin is to relate to all your brethren. Heavenly gates all in our face, we the champions. We live in the sky, we see the angels on the chariots. Waiting on the $20 bill, face a Harriet. I bet you I'ma carry it. I'm in love with music to the point I wanna marry it. But my love for people is greater, so I write messages. Largest spending power, but we still sit at a deficit Living amongst prejudice, even at our residence Moors in America, flourishing, excellent Let's buy up some neighborhoods and grow my own president Yeah And I come to you today With all intentions of spreading Love Truth Peace, freedom, and justice. Peace, Moors. We here. You're here at Moors in America. Today, we want to kind of go into some of the history of the Moors Divine National Movement and really speak about what our society, what our government is supposed to look like in its scope and structure, what the prophet actually established, and what true Moorish Americans should be striving for. Okay, not saying this to say this is what you supposed to be doing or forcing anybody to do anything, but just keeping it real. The prophet, Noble Drew Ali, set the precedent. He set the precedent. He didn't just speak about it. He established temples all over the country put in the work and that's why we honor him and so you want to speak on this what it's supposed to look like and of course um we're going to open the floor to questions so if anyone has questions feel free to chime in we'll speak about the temple but i mean if you want to ask about some of these other moorish groups feel free but um we're going to speak about what it's supposed to be how it was set up and why it was set up like that and how this works so this video it represents the views of the presenters as me and our guests and it's based off our personal life um, experiences and research and um, just wanted to put that out there but first we always rise to the highest praise to the most high our father God a lot we stand honors our divine prophet that's right I said a prophet a Rasul a noble Drew Ali for bringing us our divine creed and nationality so that we may learn to love instead of hate we extend honors to the forerunners and prophet, our dear brother Marcus Mosiah Garvey. And we also extend honors out there to everything Moorish. Also honors to all of you faithful Moorish American Muslims, light bringers watching right now. Everybody watching, make sure you click like and click the share button. All right, so good afternoon. We 
listening to the True and Living Life Bringing Morris in America. As always, I'm your brother, Lloyd Douglas L., also known as Sharif Ali. That's what we do here, though. We we bring light to all the issues that are pertinent to the Morris American paradigm. And we're uncovering um, uncovering things so that uh, for those of us who are who are looking, searching for the truth, you don't have to go through all the mistakes that a lot of people make on this road on this road to discovery there's so much information out there that has nothing even to do with being more american and it's not even producing any fruits any results so we want to stick to the divine plan of the ages because that guarantees your success so if you wouldn't mind please share this broadcast um share it on your favorite social media platform and um we're gonna go ahead and expand further on this topic so you don't want to miss it relax grab your popcorn share this in other words grab a friend and uh let's go ahead and get it going also make sure to check out our sponsors Right, Islam more so we're here we're gonna go ahead and speak on the topic um, like I said before any uh, more that have any questions just type them in the chat it's all good we'll get to it we're speaking about how this is supposed to work all right uh, what was the topic Moorish American society right um, Moorish American government we're talking about the the structure what it's supposed to look like how it works why it works and we're not speaking on the the um, any um, any ideas out there that that are like just out there. Like like for example, people you know think that it's because of how the prophet filed the Moore Science Temple of America, the paperwork that he filed. That's what makes it official. You have people that think all types of things that don't really have anything to do with how this movement works and how it's real and how it can be successful for you how it can empower you locally and then also nationally so we want to talk about that because if we're caught up in the things that don't matter or the things that aren't quite as important we'll be stuck forever i want to pull this uh graphic up here on the screen okay bear with me morris um while you're watching though, make sure you click the like and the share button. Okay. So um this this is a great graphic. Um I'm not sure who made this, just found this online, but this is a good representation of the Moorish divine national movement, what the prophet set up. You have like a little timeline and then kind of the scope, the structure, how everything fits, the foundation. So um the Moorish divine and national movement. This is this is um, this is what the prophet established, as it says here in 1913 in Newark, New Jersey, when he first started the divine work um, in 
the old Canaanite temple. This is when he first started teaching, really reaching out to people, bringing people in, bringing people on board. All right. And um, going forward, I say about what, like 12 years, a dozen years, you had the establishment of a civic organization called the Moorish Holy Temple of Science. All right. Now, why did three years later it become a religious organization, the Moorish Science Temple of America? Right. It was changed in its structure. So when it became the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, this is where you have the prophet teaching, teaching that we're more um, moving, setting up temples in different different areas. Right. The structures being given, the instructions are being given locally, what we're to do. The temples are being told to establish businesses everywhere, to collect finances, to have a treasurer at the local level in each temple. And then also eventually to have a national treasurer. OK, so this is being done for a reason. Right. And um, three over over a period of time, you know, it's growing. And then three years later, you have the changing of it from the civic to a religious organization. OK, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But that was important. Right. This was done for a reason. OK, but then within this organization, which like in the final form, you had a, the religious organization, more Science Temple of America. And um, bear with me too, because like I said, we'll go and explain this maybe in, in better detail, or if you have questions, we'll answer those. But um, within that structure, because, and the reason I wanted to show this first, a lot of people will know that this is part, but have, we still have to have X, Y, and Z. OK, and I get that. I get why people are saying that some people aren't seeing these things being done within the temple. But even that would be inaccurate to say, because some temples across the nation are doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're industrious and they're doing the work. All right. But uh, once again, you have some more who say, oh, well, the temple, that's just the religious part. We still need the government. But. And now this um, chart that you see, and it's just a, an example, but you can see from the chart that the temple actually contains all these different aspects. You have the schools for the Moorish children. You have industry, right? The prophet said for us to open businesses under the structure of the temple, under that umbrella. Why? Because it's a part of our mission. We'll talk about that. The prophet gave us a divine mission and part of that mission is to be industrious, to generate finances, right? A beggar nation can only rise so high. So that's a part of our divine mission. Then the press, the media, right? They call it media now, the press, the newspapers, all that was under the temple. Um, the Young Businessmen's League, once again, business, generating finance, maybe mentoring younger um, people to get them into that mindset of opening ownership women's auxiliary same thing right uh then moorish community development once again you're covering all the um angles with the moorish community development this is gonna you're gonna be looking into property right and coordinating it now where it's just like okay i'm gonna go get a property right we're gonna see we're gonna go and buy this property because we're gonna rent it out and start generating finance in our household but when you're doing it at the community level within the Moorish community development, right? We're doing it as a collective for the greater good, right? We're doing this as a unit, making um, informed decisions together. So all that's up under that structure. You see how there's that one arrow going down? All of these things are included in it. Then you have civics and law. All of this is being handled under the structure of the Moorish Science Temple of America because all of these things fall up under our divine mission, right? Of uplifting fallen humanity. So nothing is being left out. And the prophet came to the understanding that the religious umbrella would cover all of our needs. And also that that religious um, organization that's returning us to the structure of our ancestors. So not only does it cover our needs what you know what we're trying to do what we need to accomplish here 
in the United States, right, in America, but it's also returning us to the ways of our ancestors. Let me show you an example. Some of you may have seen this before, but I like to show this because it just gives greater understanding, right? And especially for those who want to keep saying the thing about the temple, right? Now, if the temple's not operating how it should be, I, I get that. But you don't just give it up and go start something else. That's the easiest thing to do. But we have to remember, without a foe, a soldier never knows his strength. So just because you're met with um, difficulty in accomplishing your goals doesn't mean you're supposed to give up. You're supposed to push through to the other end. So just let's go to this excerpt. This is from the book Freemasonry of Ancient Egyptians by Manly P. Hall. In this um, particular page that's up here right now, he's speaking about the ancient Egyptian government, how it's set up, okay? And if you um, look down here in the notes, right, let me blow that up for you because you might not be able to see this. So if we look down here in the notes, it says the government of ancient Egypt was theocratic. While the Pharaoh appeared to be the head of state, the priests were actually governors of the empire. And that's important to understand because even the Pharaoh, the Paheru, the Pharaoh was also a priest. The Pharaoh was a man of God, or I should say even woman of God, because there, there was a, a, a one, at least one female uh, Pharaoh. There may have been two. But um, I can think of one right offhand. So the Pharaoh is a man of God, is a priest. OK, but. The priests, the priesthood, right, they actually ran the government. So while the Pharaoh appeared to be the head of state, the priests were the actual governors of the empire. The king was placed on his throne by the priest. OK, so the king, the Pharaoh, he gets to that position by the priest, meaning he's he's appointed by the priest and then he's maintained there by priestly influence and remained the whole of his life under the guardianship and protection of the priesthood right and that's even insinuating there's an order of priests that are like there's like an army kind of like the uh priest the the uh the army that um the pope has surrounding him as well right in the jesuit order so the priesthood they they have um influence over the king who is a priest king himself and then the his whole life he's under their guardianship and protection the temples were the sanctuaries of the letters and sciences and learning in all its branches were cultivated exclusively by the priesthood so the priesthood has this huge influence on the society as a whole meaning letters and science so philosophy science all of these things are being cultivated by the priesthood so it's kind of the opposite of what happened um when um like uh european christianity um in in um in europe in like the 1400s for example 1300s 1400s even 1500s they were trying to stamp out some of the sciences right they were against it this was the opposite of the approach that our ancestors had towards this. So the priesthood cultivated all of this learning. OK, and they had influence on all aspects of society. And it even says temple in here, it even uses the word temple. The temples were the sanctuaries. This was the center of society. The government of ancient Egypt was theocratic. So you can't leave that out. It was theocratic. And this is what the prophet returned us to, man. But that's how powerful it is. That's why I'm sharing this, because Morris, you don't just give up on that. So he returned us to our ancient government, which was always theocratic. And with the temple, he established a theocratic constitutional monarchy. So you can't, you can, if you, you know, are careless, but you can't just toss that away. You know, if you truly return into the ways of your ancestors, right, you don't just toss that. You realize the power in this structure and returning to the ways of your ancestors. Now that that's been established, just wanted to share that so that you have an understanding of why 
Why even a religious organization? Now, on one hand, right, it satisfied all the needs that we um, had because everything fit up under that. Even the finances, the, the generation of finances, from our perspective, it's of the utmost importance and it can't be left out. Okay. Uh, and the prophet made sure to cover that. And um, let me give you some examples. Okay, so um, let's go in here to our Moorish literature, all right? And uh, of course, of course, we're open to questions. If anybody has questions, feel free to speak. But um, just, just looking up um, some examples so that you understand why I'm saying this is a part of our religion. So when we go to think this over, you Moors, okay? Once again, an article put out by the prophet noble drew ali okay um just going into uh business all right it says everything every business transaction or anything pertaining to finance is to be transacted in the name of the more science temple of america or noble drew ali we moors must maintain a grand treasurer just as in the days of our forefathers then you are a nation until then you are nothing okay so this is a part of our mission right to have businesses and to do this under the temple remember these are divine instructions from our prophet divine instructions so it can't be left out and it's it's important to understand that too because once again just going back to what was said earlier all angles were being covered all angles all angles okay so nothing was being left out with the establishment of the temple that may be hard to believe for some but i mean it literally covers everything because we have our own religion we have our own way of looking at things we have our own divine instructions from our own prophet and our divine instructions make it imperative of the utmost importance that we are industrious, that we're out here opening businesses. I keep saying businesses because at the end of the day, that is extremely important. And that's also why you have friction within the different, um, the different groups of Moors um, because there's stagnation within some of the groups there's not enough finance being generated not an, and then also as as grown-ups as adults if we're not conducting business if we're not being productive what else are the people going to do so they're picking and arguing about things that aren't as important and in doing so they're also not following the prophet's instructions so i want to go back to morris literature just stay with me morris want to give you some more examples now um once again, just looking at that that uh, chart that was up here, everything, all of the things that are up there fall within the realms of government, right? Who, who has children to go to public school? Doesn't that fall up under your government, like local government, right? You have a school district. The district is ran by, if you live in a town, it's ran by that town right regardless of how big or small the town is or if you live in a big city it's ran by the city so that's government business media right all of these things community development right those are those are different branches of government so all of this fell up under the temple so the temple the, the opening the, the beginning of the temple covered all of these things for us including civics and law right so when people are leaving that out, it could be because of lack of understanding, right? Lack of um, competence in that area. And they need more to come in with competence to help move things forward.
but it doesn't mean to 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 run away to just leave it all behind because he actually covered all angles for us so all we have to do now is come in and follow the instructions and um like i said earlier i wanted to share something with you though okay <laughs> all right okay so let me pull this up for you this is from Moorish literature just to give you some more examples of how the prophet covered all the angles all right and so understand we're showing this for a reason because we have the government everything's already been done for us you don't have to go and recreate it some people do that you know they go and they start their own organization and they say that the temple wasn't the government but we're showing you how it is so when you go and look into Moorish leaders historical message to America okay and this is important because this is giving you the aims in connection with the aims objects rules and regulations of the more science temple of America who's the I that deems it proper to submit to you a brief statement of our organization who is the I so let's go and look at who wrote this now if this is coming from the Prophet noble Drew Ali if we're true Moors true Moorish Americans we're listening Right, so this is coming from the Prophet Noble Drew Ali. So this is giving you the aims of the organization. All right, so Moors, listen up. We're gonna read this real quickly, not gonna read the whole thing. In connection with our religious aims and beliefs, that's very important. So you have this proclamation in connection with our religious aims and beliefs. Don't forget that this is a part of our religious aims and beliefs. We must promote what? economic security that's a part of our religion we must promote economic security and that's why also you have the moors to this is temple noble Lee's name because this is a part of our religion and that's powerful that's very powerful um one of the reasons why it's so powerful i'd rather not even mention here because you you should be able to just brainstorm on your own and come up with reasons why that is powerful you know especially when you're looking at taxation and things like that so the preaching of economic security among us is by no means as widespread as the circumstances demand so the preaching of economic security this is our religion once again no one no other one thing is more needed among us at this time than greater economic power this is part of our religion this is from our prophet we hold to this better positions for our men and women more business employment for our boys and girls and bigger incomes will follow our economic security so if we're true mores then we're not arguing things that don't matter right you know squabbling over petty issues we should be out there being industrious because better positions for our men and women being able to employ our own people our own children and bigger incomes creating um economic security for our people this should be what we're what we're um fired up about right not filing all this paperwork starting businesses we shall be securing nothing until we have economic power a beggar people cannot develop the highest in them nor can they attain to a genuine enjoyment of the spiritualities of life if if you're struggling just struggling trying to get by it's hard and to just even to fully develop to fully unfold from a spiritual perspective it's hard if you're trying to keep your head above the water so this is a part of our religion so this and, and then just to close it, it says read carefully the doctrines of the more science temple of america it contains our hopes aims rules and articles of religion every member should have a copy so we should all understand this um just one more thing to only hit on this the problems of life are largely social and economic social and economic that's politics and economics politics and business in a profound sense they are moral and spiritual okay so just hitting on that again just so that it's understood this is what we should be charged with this is what we should be and this is not me 
telling you what to do. This is what our prophet commanded. This is what our prophet put out. So we should be charged up about opening businesses, about um, about creating opportunities for each other, about being able to hire our own people to, to set up generational wealth for ourselves and our families. This is what we should be fired up about, not about filing all this paperwork and doing things like that. We should be fired up because this is a part of our religion. We all heard that, right? That was read to you. This is that is powerful. So it's a part of our religion. There's there's um, religious, uh, excuse me, religious organizations. There's churches that can't really get that much involved in the starting of businesses. But this is a part of our religion. It's a part of our religion. So that's powerful, man. That's how we uplift fallen humanity by being industrious. So going back to this with the um, the economic portion, okay? Now we all saw that. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just sharing with you because a lot of people never seen this. These are the instructions from your prophet. If you're a true Moorish American, you should be holding to this. So this is from an old Moorish guide. Islam. And as we read this, right, these are instructions, instructions to go out to the entire nation. It says it is the policy of every temple to have a community store and a laundry owned and operated by qualified members of the temple. In all of the cities will be found a store or a laundry. And in some cities are two and three stores and markets. There are also is also attached to the activities of the temple that has to do with the question of employment for the members. Thrift is one of the prophet's main points. And when he speaks on such matters, the members hear and obey. So you're getting instructions from your prophet to be industrious, to go out here. So if like, say it's four, five, six, seven, eight of us more here in Ohio, and we're getting together, brother uh, Jones Bay, Right. Are, are we coming together to like say, oh, man, let's go and let's let's uh, let's file a whole bunch of paperwork. Let's do. No, we're coming together. We're putting finances up to start businesses. The businesses are bringing in finances and then we can take those finances and start to buy property and expand on that business that we already started. And then pretty soon, you know, we're, we're, we're looking, we have plans because what, what did, what did that, um, that chart have that we just had up on the screen and, uh, peace and love to everybody commenting on here. Peace and love. I want to ask everybody to make sure that you share this video, share the video so that we can help spread the message. Cause I'm not out here encouraging people to do things that's going to mess their life up. We're keeping it real. Like what the prophet did was actually practical. I'm not saying that there's nothing mystical to it. You know, things that might be hard to understand. I'm just saying like it was very practical and it could be done by any of us. So um, going back to this, right? All right. You have the Moorish community development. Moorish community development. And the reason I'm showing that is because like, OK, you have a business like in that in that um, article, it said markets like grocery stores, right? Laundry, right? So they, they have a business or businesses where every temple is. But if you, you have this business and it's generating finance, you have the Moorish community development aspect of the temple as well. So we need to get real estate. You know, maybe even some some real estate in the city where, you know, there's some there's some commercial buildings. We need to get that. You might not even have a business to put in there. You might be renting it out, you know, leasing it out. But this is a part of it. So this is all in there. It's all in there. And this is why, you know, we we deal like Islam, Brother Jones Bay. We deal with the, the practical, right? The practical aspects of it. Because it's very real. There's nothing like, you know, um, hard to understand about it. It's something that we can all get on board with and make it work. It's it's not difficult to understand. It's it's something that other people can do and have done and do. They do it all over 
all over the country. Even people who come over here from other countries, they do it. There's no reason why we can't. And it's it's not even it's not too late. We can do it. The prophets started an everlasting movement. Those are the prophets' words. This is an everlasting movement. All we have to do is stop sleeping. So even if you know you're more, if we're not being industrious and moving as a unit, we still sleep. So this is what we need to do. We need to work together. We need to follow the instructions. So you saw that the prophet kept hitting on economics without without making it where we can hire each other. We have our own businesses. We can put our own people on. Without that, we can't even attain to the higher potential that we have. We're limited, right? People can't be out here struggling to get by. Um, there's one example that I like to use. Uh, let me see if I could just Google this real quick. So there's an example I like to use just um, looking at the um, the Jewish people in Williamsburg, New York. I think it, they're in Brooklyn, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so uh, all right. So if you look at some of the Hasidic Jews in um, Williamsburg, right? They got it. They got it under control. All right. Um, it's pretty much set up for them to succeed, to be able to live how they want to live. If there's a certain way that the women dress, the women wear. Like, for example, if the women are supposed to wear dresses, they're going to be able to do it. The side locks that they have, like you see with the boys and the men, they have the side lock, right? They can do it. And then then they're walking around and they're not the only ones doing it. They're in their own community right in the middle of Brooklyn. Okay. And also there's there's more to it than that. So they're, they're comfortable. They have their own police force as well. All right. And then one other reason I wanted to bring this up is because like within their community, they have a lot of um, a lot of people who just all they do is go to um, Torah school where they learn the Torah. They learn to master this because this is their law. This is their way of life. And I'm using this as an example because they they set it up for themselves to succeed. So they have people who just go to Torah school and they might be on the system. They might be getting Section 8. They may be on a fixed income. And so they made sure that they bought up several of these like brownstones, real nice buildings in Brooklyn. And they set it up for their own people to be able to stay there on Section 8. So their rent is what they can afford. They're paying like, what, $80 a month for rent in a place where like in New York, where it's going to be like, what, astronomical. I don't even know what the rent is in New York now. It's going to be ridiculous, right? But they set it up for themselves. And they, I mean, this, this is something that we can do everywhere we live. There's nowhere near as many um, Jews in this country as it is so-called African-Americans. Maybe even Moorish Americans, those who know that they're Moors. We're everywhere, right? We're in New York. We're in, we're in um, Brooklyn, too. We're in Alabama. We're everywhere. So there's no reason why we can't do this and see they're able to to live, to to worship, to do what they feel is important and also to inspire pride in them. So they have youngsters who are coming up with with their culture, who are learning it right. The youngsters aren't getting caught up in gangster rap and all this mess. Right. And so this is what the prophet was building so that we can be prosperous regardless of what is going on around us. Because you're talking about Brooklyn, like, you know, well, Brooklyn ain't like it used to be, right? But it's still it's still rough. Like, no matter what, like, you see the dude walking by all the graffiti, like, no matter what, you can't escape. Like, you know, it's, you know, it's New York. There's going to be corruption. There's going to be all types of stuff going on. But right in the middle of that, they can create their own sanctuary. Like I was saying, even have their own police force. Right? And there's no reason why we can't do that as well. Um, 
so i wanted to i wanted to get a picture of some of their police because they they have them man they they have like yarmulkes on and um you know they got like the body armor and everything but anyway it's enough of that so that that was just an example but i'm showing that because it's, it's real people do it all the time there's nothing mystical or hard to understand about it we just have to put in the work and it's not going to happen without truly following the prophet's instructions so there's a lot of people leaving that finance part out right they want to talk about everything else so every temple had a business all right every temple and uh hang on one second Morris. take a look at that if you hadn't read that yet though okay so that's how the temple worked and um just to go back to this once again the practical reasons why the temple worked okay so you see here it is the policy of every temple to have these stores not just one store but several stores okay because you want to be able to employ your own members all right and as it says when the prophet speaks when when he speaks on such matters the members hear and obey so each temple is starting businesses okay each temple has their own treasurer the temples collecting finances locally and then nationally right this was established nationally to send finances to the national treasurer so now we have local we have our own goals but also from a national perspective we have goals and things that we're trying to achieve so we're collecting generating finances for that as well right and that puts us on the same playing field with everyone else then another reason why this really worked okay so yeah uh how many temples do you have 17 and you had cities across the midwest and upper south but the other reason why the temple was real why the prophet really established the nation is because they had the numbers so you had thirty-five thousand members estimated recognize noble drew five thousand members in 17 temples in cities across the midwest and the upper south moving you know with the common cultural identity and same leadership so this is why it carried weight like for example to give you an example if we have 35,000 members right now who are actually in the temple i don't think it's that high even half that but say there's 35,000 members right now in the temple and i do see that question i will get to you so just for example just to make sure everybody's following me say across the um north america right we have 35,000. This is just an example. I'm not saying that we do, but just for example, so there's 35,000 in, okay. It's not the same as what the prophet had, because if you try to say that we have 35,000 members who are in the temple right now, which is probably way too high of an estimate, but it's not the same thing because who's the national head, right? You had the temples splinter off into several different groups. I mean, like seriously, just asking the question, how many national heads or how many people are there claiming to be national head? Like, that's a good question. I mean, there's more than five. So the number's up there, right? There's several. There's some who might be claiming and they only have like a handful of members. There's some who's claiming it might have a few hundred, right? But there's that's the thing. There's several, <coughs> several claiming to be head. There's even several claiming to have a Supreme Grand Council. Right. And so you have this splintering. And so it's not the same as what the prophet had. And so that's one another reason why it doesn't have the power. It doesn't hold the weight. And for whatever reasons, these different factions won't come together and just bite their egos right people just come together and realize okay we can't all be claiming to be national head so for whatever reasons these people can't come together they're keeping it weak they're keeping it watered down 
And I'm not even saying we have that many members. I mean, if the prophet could do this nearly a hundred years ago, why can't we do that now? So I don't, I don't, I don't think anyone knows how many members there are. There are actually card carrying members of the Morris Science Temple of America, but it it doesn't matter because it's all split up into different factions. So it's not the same as having one leadership, right? Like you can't have several people claiming to be, uh, what's a, a country, right? Um, several people claiming to be Ghana, several, you know, like in that, in that area where Ghana is right now, you can't have, and, and I'm not saying that there aren't issues within these countries, but I'm saying even within those people, they have issues. They still recognize their president as their national head, even if they don't agree with them. They, they agree that this is our nation. This is our structure. And we don't need to, we don't need to attack that structure that we have, because if we don't recognize it, it loses its power. You understand? Like you can't have several, several um, factions within Brazil claiming to be the state of Brazil, the nation, right? Even if they don't agree with the president, even if they don't agree with what they're doing, they still have to respect that office, respect that position. And um, if they do have differences, they have to work within their structure to, to fix it. So hopefully that makes sense. So this is one of the reasons why what the prophet did actually worked, why it carried weight. And then also why he was recognized as a head of state. So when I say he was recognized as a head of state, um, I don't have any examples up here on the screen. So you just have to listen. The prophet was meeting with governors, meeting with senators, meeting with other powerful people. And he was being received as a head of state. I believe he went to the governor's inauguration and he was seated in the presidential car on the train. Why? Because he's over several, you know, tens of thousands of members across the nation. And then in, in Illinois alone, right, several thousand. He could affect elections. So he's respected at that level. And so when he traveled, he is literally being, you know, received as a head of state, respected by other leaders. And respect doesn't mean that people like you. We don't care if people like us. You know, when um, Hillary Clinton was running for president, she met with some so-called Black Lives Matter leaders and they asked her if she likes black people. This is the question they ask someone who's trying to get the most powerful position in the in the um, in the in the country. Right. Maybe in the world, possibly. So. They're asking her if she likes black people. It doesn't matter. None of that matters, right? So the people who treated Noble Drew Ali as a head of state, it's not because they like him. They didn't have to like him. He had power. He had all of these members recognize him as a head of state. They all recognize the structure that he set up and respected the government. And not only that, they weren't beggars. They were generating their own finances locally and nationally they had a national treasure national treasury sorry so they have their own finances which means they can push their own agenda with or without the assistance of others that's very important because you can't come into a place making demands if you don't have any leverage so the moors had leverage and they had numbers and that's why it worked and that's also why in this day and age People are putting the cart before the horse. Putting the cart before the horse is, you know, asinine, right? You don't put the cart before the horse. Let me get an image of that. You don't do that, right? The horse has to pull the cart. You can't do this. So that's a saying because that's, that's backwards. So the prophet, before he even established the Supreme Grand Council, he did this last um tried to speak on this on another video there was a brother who was in there was real emotional like he he was like he did not get it and i seen that brother he made like a bunch of videos about the supreme grand council which is great and all and no one's saying that it's not an integral portion of what we have it's just that the prophet established the council last after the temples had businesses in all of the cities and they got in compliance where they were generating finance, putting it up locally and nationally. 
right? They had the per capita tax. They had the grand treasurer. They had local treasurers. That's when, that's when he said, okay, now we're going to finalize this government structure. Now we have seven tried and true and accepted by you to represent you on the council. That's when you can't do that first, right? If you put the cart before the horse, now, see, you don't know because we don't ride horse and buggies no more. But if you try this, it's not going to work. You're just going to be sitting there looking stupid because the cart pulls the horse. So you have to take care of that first. You can't do it backwards. You're not going to go anywhere. That's really important to understand because if you don't do it right, it's not going to go anywhere. So that's another reason things aren't going anywhere. We have to look at that, too. We have to really look at that. Like, are we truly following the divine plan of the ages? The prophet set the footprints. He he set the um he set the trail for us. He already went and walked it and showed how to do it. So what we have to do is move as a unit now. So there are already temples in other cities, and there's moors all over the place that aren't in the temples. But you claim that you want to build this nation, that you need to come in and help build, right? Everybody watching. You should be ready to come in and help build and you should be ready to study the prophet and then actually hold everyone accountable. If you're in the temple and the leadership's not pushing to unify, right, and, and pushing um, to, to establish sound businesses, to start to acquire real estate if they aren't doing that already, you know, to have sound business practices and to um, to be pushing to be in a position where they can hire their own people. They're not doing that. Then you need to hold them accountable. We all need to, right? You can't put the cart before the horse though. You can't ignore the setting up of the foundation setting up the, cause it's like, how, what is the Supreme council going to preside over? They're supposed to be ruling over the properties and businesses that the temple owns. How can they do this if there are no businesses and temples, if there's no real estate? Right. So you can't put the car before the horse. If you do that, then you have a council that's not really doing anything. There's nothing really to handle. There's no business. There's no finances. How's it even being um, being supported? Right. What from dues? <coughs> no, it's supposed to be. There's supposed to be finances coming in right? It's all about business. It really is. And so if that part is being left out, you have nothing. So this is one of the reasons why it worked is because the prophet had all these members under one leadership. That's a big thing. We don't have that today. There's several people claiming it would be ahead. So that, that needs to be halted. Um, and then the member locally, we need to follow our divine instructions. We we have that's why I wanted to share that the words from the prophet where he's given the aims and hopes of the movement. Everybody should be tuned in when he's giving the aims and hopes of the movement. He's letting it be known that we need to be generating finance, that this is a part of our religion. It's in connection with our religious um, aims and beliefs. We must promote economic security. Right. The preaching of it. The preaching of it. Come on. You know, it's it's a part of our spiritual mission because a beggar people cannot develop the highest in them, nor can they attain to a genuine enjoyment of the spirituality, spiritualities of life. Excuse me. We shall be securing nothing until we have economic power. Once again, these are the aims. These are the, the doctrines of the Morris Science Temple of America. It contains our aims, hopes, rules, and articles of religion. So we have to understand this is a part of our religion. So as, as Moorish men, when we're coming together, we're building. We're also, we're businessmen. This is why um, ideally Moorish Americans, uh, men are wearing suits, right? Like how many of us have suits? We're wearing suits because suits, suits and ties, that's like the international standard for business. When people see, especially you come in, suited and booted with the fez on they automatically know oh international businessman he ain't coming to play games now you come in there with some tight sagging pants on you got you have some baggy clothes pants sagging anything like that anything other than that 
you're going to be looking foolish. And when you put the fez on, then now you're making you're 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 desecrating your culture with the foolishness. Islam, corporate attire, international standard of business, and also internationally, that is a suit of power. You have a suit and tie on. Automatically, you're seen as a businessman. You're seen as somebody to be taken seriously. Okay. So a lot of this is about business. This is a part of our religion. This is a part of us taking care of our earthly needs so that we can now put more towards the spiritualities of life, right? Developing the highest in us. We have to take care of that. We can't be struggling to get by and develop the highest in us. So that's a part of our religion, Morris. And so that's also a reason why things are lagging behind, okay? Um, there was a question asking, are Caribbeans Moors? Okay, so that's that's an easy question to answer. Um, who's the forerunner to the prophet? The John the Baptist to our, our prophet, Noble Drew Ali. Somebody, come on, somebody answer that. Somebody in the chat, who's the forerunner to the prophet? That should be an easy question if we're Moors. Okay, so the forerunner to the prophet is our brother Marcus Mosiah Garvey. Marcus Garvey is from the Caribbean. He's from Islam. He's from Jamaica. Okay? And, um, yeah, when people think about Jamaicans, you think about, you know, dark-skinned people, people that look like us, people that look like so-called African-Americans. So it's obvious that they're Moors as well. Okay? But also Haiti. Haiti, um, even the um, the islands that were colonized by the Spaniards. And when I say the islands, Haiti and Dominican Republic are the same island. It used to be called Hispaniola. Same people split up by Spain and France. And, um, you know, I mean, same people for the most part. Okay. So, yeah, Dominicans, Cubans, Puerto Ricans, um, I mean, the list goes on and on, right? All throughout the Quran. If you are Quran, there. And it's simple for us who the Asiatics are. Okay, so let's let's go into that. Did I say Quran questionnaire? Go into our Quran, okay? So uh, let's let's answer that question by sticking to the Prophet. One go to the divine origin of the Asiatic nations. Okay. Chapter 45. The fallen sons and daughters of the Asiatic nation of North America need to learn to love instead of hate. Now, right here, the prophet is specifically speaking to us, um, the so-called African Americans, because it says the fallen sons and daughters of the Asiatic nation of North America need to learn love instead of hate and to know their higher self and lower self. This is the uniting of the Quran, Holy Quran of Mecca for teaching and instructing all Moorish Americans, ETC. Now, this is here for a reason, but I'll get back to that after we read this. Right. So the key of civilization was and is in the hands of the Asiatic nations, the Moorish, who were the ancient Moabites and the founders of the holy city of Mecca. Okay, and then we get other people, list list of other people that are Asiatics, which is pretty much all of the so-called colored people of the world. All of the so-called ethnic people of the world, even Japanese and Chinese, the Hindus of India. But then um, to specifically speak to what you said, the Asiatic nations of North, South and Central America Okay, the Caribbean, Central America, boom. Okay, so he's he's listing the people, the the Asiatic nations of North, South, and Central America, boom. So you got Brazil, you got you got all of that, Central America. He enlists all the islands, but Central America covers that. The Moorish Americans and Mexicans of North America, Brazilians, Argentinians, Chileans in South America. So you wouldn't specifically say 
Moorish American because he he lets it be plain and understood here that when he's saying Moorish American, he's specifically talking about the so-called black people, the so-called uh, <laughs> African Americans. Okay, that's who the Moorish Americans are. But yeah, you know, Moorish Brazilians, Moorish Jamaicans, you know, Moorish Haitians. Okay, so you got Brazilians, Argentinians, Chileans in South America. It goes on and on. Colombians, Nicaraguans, natives of San Salvador and Central America, ETC, all of these are Muslims. Okay, so you, you pretty much covered all that, though, when you said the Asiatic nations of North, South and Central America. All right. So all of these people are Moors. And then just going back up to the first verse. The fallen sons and daughters of the Asiatic nation of North America. This is explaining why the prophet had to come from amongst us. This is why the prophet is from um, North Carolina. Okay. Why he had to come from amongst us. Because the fallen sons and daughters of the Asiatic nation of North America, meaning us, we needed to learn to love instead of hate. And to know of our higher and lower self. Because once that happens, that would that would complete the uniting of the Holy Quran of Mecca for teaching and instructing all Moorish Americans and then ETC. Then he lists who the ETC is. Eventually, we to spread this out to all of the Asiatics. And that includes North, South, and Central America. Okay, so these are our people too, and specifically the people in the Americas. Okay? So the prophet came from amongst us in North Carolina because he had a specific message. He had to come to us. We're going to unite it once we begin to understand the the higher and lower self and begin to work to subdue our own lower self to be the best version of us then and only then will we be able to spread this message out to the world to assist right but only once we get that down so it's not just about knowing that you are more we have to we have a mission we have to begin to fulfill our mission to do the work on our lower self. And um, just to answer the question again, yes, the people in the Caribbean are Moors. So there's no confusion about that. All right, Islam, let me see. There, there was another question in here. And... Yeah, Islam. So yeah, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, for the most part, the same people, right? And of course, there's immigrants, people that come from all over the world to come to those islands. You know, you have people of Chinese descent that are in Haiti, that are in um, Puerto Rico, you know. But I'm specifically pe speaking about those so-called people of Afro descent, the so-called Afro Latinos, the, um, you know, those are Moors. OK, but when you saw reading from the divine origin of the asiatic nations we see that even the chinese and japanese the turks the arabians the 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 hindu you know when we say indian we're not speaking about so-called indians here the the people from the the nation of india they're asiatics islam okay so it's it's important for us to understand, just going back to this, why this is being brought up is how this worked. Okay. So we spoke on the practical reasons. Now I want to want to speak on something else too. But um just going back to this, uh practical reasons now, real quick, just understand that the prophet had, you know, estimated over 35,000 members in 17 temples, and that was across the nation. And then even though they're in all these different cities and states, they were unified under one body of leadership. That's why, from a practical perspective, he was received as a head of state. You can't be over 100 leaders, 100 members, and then this person over there is over 12 members, and this person over there has like, you know, 300 members, and y'all all claiming to be national head. That's, come on, man. It's asinine. That's asinine. There's no way that works. You're not recognized. It doesn't matter what your filing is. None of that carries any weight if you don't have that, those numbers behind you and unified. And then what else? What, what did we show? This is just briefly. 
Now remember, economic security, the preaching of economic security, this is a part of our religion. So every temple, the prophet had the temple set up. They are to obey, to hear and obey. They are to have businesses in every temple. Every city, right? In some cities, two or three stores and markets. And then, you know, we want to be in a position to employ our own members, to employ our own people. So this is another reason why it's recognized, why it was recognized, and why another reason why you can't just pick up and just start a council and just, oh, all of a sudden you recognize. Unless you're going to unify or say, say you're not going to unify all of the other temples, but you're going to get 35, 40. I mean, like, look, uh, one other thing. You're going to get all these members, though, this this um, recognizing you. That's important. But one other thing, going back to this now. Um, right. It said the prophet had 35,000 members. This is without the Internet. Without the Internet doing this in the 1920s. So if you look at the population of the of uh, the United States around that time, it was around 100 million, maybe 109 million. You look at the population today. It's over 330 million. OK, so multiply that times three. That's how many members you need to have, at least that. And that should be easy now with the Internet. You can reach all these people. You know, so that's another thing. Right. So if you multiply thirty five thousand times three, that's one hundred five thousand. So you need to have at least one hundred five thousand members unified, recognizing this one single body of leadership. And then you can still have all of these other different factions claiming to be leader. It won't matter. Um, one thing that I've spoken about on here, too, a lot of people don't know, but um, with the Nation of Islam, right? There is um, the Nation of Islam. If you ask anybody who's the head of it, they're going to say Minister Farrakhan. OK, but there's an, there's there's actually other factions. There are other factions. But guess what? They don't really matter. And it's not knocking them. It's nothing against them. It's just keeping it real. The one that matters is Minister Farrakhan. All of these people, thousands of people that are, you know, thousands of members, they all recognize him. Even people who aren't members recognize him as the leader. Okay? Or at least recognize him as the leader of the nation of Islam. That's what matters. So um, there are other factions in the nation of Islam, though. And, um, people, you know, yeah, most people have never heard of them. There was one faction. I saw this a long time ago. They called themselves the United Nation of Islam. And they had this guy, this their leader named Royal Jenkins, right? Or Royale. And um, I don't know how many members they have, if they even actually have members. I was just putting this up as an example because there's other factions, but they don't matter. Nobody ever even heard. Nobody heard of this dude. And it's not a knock. I don't have anything against them. But the leader of the nation of Islam, regardless of what anyone else says, is Minister Farrakhan. There's other people, too, who I won't like pull up on here. There's other people that don't agree with Farrakhan. They went and started their own one. But it doesn't matter. OK, so this dude, a former trucker, founded the United Nation of Islam more than four decades ago, declaring himself to be a lie. He got his own little crazy sounding story about why he's the leader and he started his own thing. But it doesn't matter. There's people, like I said, they own a group of fair kind. They started their own. They don't really matter. The Nation of Islam is the one with the minister fair kind. OK, that's not a knock to the others like uh, the brother shared in the chat. Uh, Silas Muhammad, much respect to him. You know, much respect to Royal Jenkins as well. It's no knock to them. It's just keeping it real. The same way the prophet moved. He had 35,000 members back then with no internet, no easy way of reaching people. You had to get out there in the streets and get out and connect with people and get out and travel everywhere. You know, if you're not seen or heard, people forget about you. So you had to get out and go to all of these different places. It wasn't as easy. So 35,000 back then would be the equivalent of having at least 100, you know, at least six figures. You got to have at least 105,000 members today to even to even 
act like your counsel, your grand body, anything carries any weight. You can't have several different groups calling themselves the Morris Times Temple of America, each with their own grand body, their own grand council, when they're all claiming to be the original. And none of them really generating enough finance to really have any weight and then not having the members unified so that they got that political weight. That's where it was from a practical perspective. I really want us to understand that because there's several people who will tell you different, but it doesn't matter. What was the question? Oh yeah. So I did answer that question. Um, you can rewind back because I kind of spent a long time kind of explaining it. But um, for the most part, yeah, Caribbeans are Moors too. But definitely go back and watch that section. And if you, you know, if Caribbean descent, you want to share that with your family and friends, make sure you do that. But yeah, we went in on that. So yeah, the Caribbeans, yeah, they're they're Moors as well. Islam. Uh, and you know what uh, is not well known, but the Nation of Islam, uh, Minister, minister uh, I mean, um, the the messenger elijah muhammad the honorable elijah muhammad was in the more science temple of america he was a member of temple four in detroit elijah pool bay right he started the allah temple of islam where they were still wearing fezes they still had the literature from the more science temple of america and then eventually they had to branch, they had to get away from that because they were getting into trouble. Some of the members got into trouble with the law. They had too much heat on them. So they had to kind of reinvent themselves and they turned into the nation of Islam eventually. And so everything that came out of that, like Clarence 13X, Nations of Gods and Earths, all of that stuff is emanating from the Moorish Science Temple of America. When you really get into it, all of that is. I wanted to get one of those pictures for you just so you could see. But um, you can look that up. A lot Temple of Islam, Detroit. And it's very real. That's not, you know, that's not um, speculation. It's very real. And um, that's what the Nation of Islam came out of. It later became the Nation of Islam. Right. So. And yes, I see um, what you chat do. He's <laughs> weird. Who cares? He got mad because, like, I did a video warning people about people selling paperwork and warning them, like, people because people were trying to get over on Morse. And dude just came on there and started going crazy. He made like 10, 15 videos about me. I made zero videos about him. So that ought to tell you something about this character. But if y'all are entertained by that type of foolishness, you know, so be it. So going in here, I wanted, I wanted to pull up a picture of the Allah Temple of Islam, but I don't have it. Okay, actually, I do. So this was from the old final call. Before it became the final call, it used to be the final call to Islam. And as you can see in here, it's in Detroit, right? Uh, this isn't really a good picture. But in this uh, final call to Islam, this is from 1934. So this is like, you know, a couple years after the prophet made a transition. It says, Prophet Fard, right? So Master Fard Muhammad used to be referred to as Prophet Fard, like it says down here, Prophet Fard Muhammad. And you can't see really good in this picture. Maybe I can get a better quality picture. But in that picture, all those members have on fezes. So if you haven't seen that before, that's that's the actual image from the old final call. Uh, let me see. I have another one. I think this is a better one. Let's see. Uh, 
So as you can see in here, once again, um, he was called Prophet Fard. Before he was Master Fard and he was a law in person, he was Prophet W.D. Fard. And the members were all wearing fezes. They used to also distribute the um, literature from the Morris Science Temple of America. Like before they had their own, the women also wore turbans. And uh, you want to see some more, right? Here's another old article. And um, if anybody thinks this is an attack on the nation of Islam, I don't know what to tell you because I'm not saying anything negative, just sharing the truth. So here's from another old article. Um, when it says Mahmoud, it's trying to say Muhammad, Mahmoud, right? Muhammad, um, prophet of the Allah Temple of Islam, okay? And then um, this is just speaking on that Allah Temple of Islam, which became the nation of Islam. Typical of the propaganda are these extracts from a spe specially written Quran. Remember, see, it's spelled K O R A N, furnished to members who were Adam and Eve. These are coming from the Quran questionnaire, right? They had that same literature. They are the mothers and fathers of humanity, Asiatics and Muslims. Doesn't that sound familiar? Who is guarding the holy city of Mecca to keep the unbelievers away? What is the modern name for those angels? Asiatics. Like, this is the same thing. Are we Moorish Americans any relation to those angels? Yes. So this is coming from the early nation of Islam literature. This is what they were putting out. The Asiatic nations of the New World were described by Mahmoud as the Moorish Americans, his name for Negroes. All right. So he was originally spreading the same teachings because this is what it morphed out of. They had to get away from that, though, because they were getting into trouble. They were being accused of... Um, um, acts of sedition, like they were being accused of of um, being traitors, like helping Japan in the uh, in World War II. So they had to completely reinvent themselves. You know, I could really go in more in depth on that some other time, but that's the real actual history. OK, and so that's also why they, they had the same plan, you know, putting their mosque in every city, making sure that they have businesses and um, spreading and central leadership. That's why um, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was real and also received and treated as a head of state as well, right? Islam, you said the title of Prophet Far was also used in the original writings from Message to the Black Man and the Supreme Wisdom, yeah. So they changed all that up later, right? Yep. And the blueprint, yep, came from the Moore Science Temple of America. You know, it's no knock. It just is what it is. It's not like using that to, it's like some kind of claim to fame. Like the temple has a lot of work to do, right? It's not realizing its full potential. So there's no, there's, there's no um, reason why anybody should see that as a slight. It's just the truth. Okay, so um, another reason... Uh, just to go into this a little bit more about the temple, we're going to read a little bit, uh, some, some words from Brother Azim Hopkins Bay, right? Speaking about the Morris Science Temple of America, the, the organization, right? The Morris Science Temple of America, a body politic and corporate, a nation within a nation. Saying the temple is analogous, analogous to the Holy See. The Holy See is the Roman Catholic Church. It is to the Roman Catholic Church what the Grand Major Temple is to the Morris Science Temple of America. The Holy See is the manifest potential of what the Morris Science Temple of America can progress towards. Not saying it's already there. The Holy See is the central government of the Roman Catholic Church. Right. The Holy See refers to the composite authority, jurisdiction, and sovereign authority of the Pope and his advisors to direct the worldwide Roman Catholic Church. The Vatican City State is the territorial unit where the Holy See is placed. In an interesting little known fact, the Roman Catholic Archdiocese in America was incorporated in Chicago in Cook County in 1843. Although the Catholic Church is a religious organization, it is also a fully functioning nation, which is recognized by the UN. The Holy See is located within the land of Rome, Italy, and even though it is within the bounds of Italy's land, in spite of all this, they're still recognized as a sovereign nation with the Pope as his head. 
The Holy See is a nation within the nation. They have, they maintain diplomatic relations with over 170 different sovereign nations, including the United States of America and the European Union. All right. So just giving that example, because when you observe the patterns of the Holy See, one fully comprehends the perspective scope of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Okay. Just sharing this to give like some um, better understanding. The Holy Prophet Noble Drew Ali set up the Moorish Science Temple of America under the divine guidance of Allah. And the final step in forming the Moorish Science Temple of America, the Holy Prophet properly filed an affidavit in Cook County's uh, recorder's office of Illinois in Chicago. Okay. And he established um, the religious organization officially in 1928 so he set this up right here in north america and it wasn't seen as treason you know an act of treason because we have the right we have the religious freedom to um to pursue happiness and and whatever we deem important or we see is important this is these are divine instructions coming to us from our creator and that's why we really have to understand this. And then we have to stand on the five divine principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And we really have to be about that work. Right? So when Moors are moving against the prophet, when they're moving outside of this, they don't even understand, like, you have no protection. You are open to attack. So... Within the herds revised statutes, like with the when the prophet uh, established the religious corporation, right? It allowed for or it, the the wording allowed for the creation of a body politic. Okay, when you look in uh, chapter thirty two, paragraph one hundred sixty five, and herds revised statute, it says any church, congregation, or society formed for the purpose of religious worship may be incorporated in the following manner. I'm going to skip down a little bit, right? And it says, and upon filing the affidavit as herein provided, it shall be and remain a body politic and corporate by the name so adopted. Why is that important? According to Black Law Dictionary, third edition, third edition, the legal term body politic is exactly defined as the collective body of a nation or state as politically organized or as exercising political functions. So in other words, the Moorish Science Temple of America is the collective body of the Moorish nation in America. The Moorish Science Temple of America is the sole legitimate representative of the Moorish American people, the true government of the Moorish nation. Okay? And so this is why it can't be skipped over, left out. Also why we need to do the work to clean things up and to hold ourselves accountable to make sure that we're following our divine instructions. That is the only way to guarantee our success, okay? And so just from what was shared, for those who are <clears throat> totally new to this, that should be motivation to actually go out, get get the Moorish literature so that you can read this and especially read the stuff like I read this actually from the prophet so that you understand the aims of the movement. Read carefully the doctrines of the Moorish Science Temple of America. He warned us even back then. It contains our hopes, aims, rules, and articles of religion. Every member should have a copy. Nobody can stop you from understanding this. If you see that Moors aren't moving in a proper capacity, you can assist in moving things in the correct direction. Okay? And remaining industrious. Understanding that this is actually a part of our religion. And that is why when you understand this, right, in connection with our religious aims and beliefs, we must promote economic security. And then when you understand that, now you understand why the prophet is giving out instructions to every temple that they must maintain businesses. Right. So when you see that, now you understand why this is being sent out across the nation. It's the policy of every temple to have a community store and laundry. Now you understand. So he really was establishing a nation. And so in order to make this work, we have to do the same thing here and now.
be industrious, starting businesses, no matter where you're at. You could be in Kansas. You could be in Iowa. You could be in Virginia, regardless of where you're at. Those are the instructions. And that's something that you can do, even if you just have a small collective of moors, maybe it's five or seven of you, you can come together and begin to put finances up to start businesses and then to start, you know, to, to move for, forward from there. And then also, um, once again, just I want to reiterate on this too: the importance of actually following through with the divine instructions to truly follow what the prophet did. We have to have, you can't just have a bunch of people. They have to be unified. So there were 35,000 members with one body of leadership. That's the part that can't be left out. So all of these people claiming to be heads, that's that's got to be like, pe if people have, you know, respect for themselves, they have to, they have to hold themselves accountable for being a part of the problem keeping everything separated and maybe some people won't be a part of the solution you know some people may would maybe would rather be the head of a small group of people rather than working to actually unify and actually build the movement you know for real like the prophet did and that's fine because there's several other people out here too who may not even know that they're moors who can come in under a unified leadership but that that has to be the case because there weren't at that time you didn't have like 4000 members over here maybe 400 over here 200 over there no it was 35000 unified under one leadership 17 temples in cities all across the midwest and upper south all right so that's important to understand it, it has to be one body and um you know if we're doing that now we can work now when when we see you know the the um the, the confusion that was you know put into our community promoted to us beat into us it's still here today right and that's what's keeping us from actually living up to our potential so on that note though let's go ahead and close this out um thank you everybody for participating hopefully you will like and share this video if you haven't done so already help to get this information out there if you want to help to support the um broadcast make sure you send a cash out to moors in america just cash out moors in america and uh also check out the website moorsinamerica.com and then on that note we're gonna go ahead and get up out of here peace and love everybody